My sources tell me that you're quite the beer aficionado. So what are some of your favorite breweries and local beers? Oh, man, we could do a whole podcast on that alone. Being born and raised in Milwaukee, I think beer is in my uh, DNA. I thought you were going to say veins. (laughs) (laughs) Well, DNA, veins, blood, um, you name it. Exploring local breweries and, and drinking craft beer are always part of my travel itineraries. And I remember when you could bring more than three ounces of liquid onto a plane. And there was a few times where a six pack was my carry on. <laughs> but if I have to be true to my roots, my, my favorite beer of all time is a lager that's called Spotted Cow by a small brewery in Wisconsin named Nuglaris. And you can only get this beer in Wisconsin. Chicagoans and Illinoisans have tried to bootleg it into their state and have gotten fined. But uh, I managed to uh, smuggle some in every time I go back to uh, visit family and friends in uh, Wisconsin. This is Brand USA Talks Travel, elevating the conversation about international travel to the United States. Here's your host, Mark Lapidus. It's great to have President and CEO of Travel Sin and Wendy Hazy on the podcast today. Wendy has over 24 years' experience in destination marketing. She began her career in 1999 with Visit Milwaukee. You'll hear it in her voice, folks, in just a minute. As PR manager, and she collaborated on the Harley Davidson 100th anniversary and the Major League Baseball All Star Game. And I'm going to ask you about Major League Baseball in just a minute, Wendy. As the first employee of Travel Santa Ana, you had uh, the huge task of starting a DMO operationally from scratch, which is unusual in this industry. So tell me about that in your early days. Yeah, um, I just celebrated my two year anniversary with Travel Santa Ana. It was a brand new destination marketing organization um, incorporated as of January 1st, 2021. And I was the uh, first employee hired that August. I have had the fortunate opportunity to start a DMO post COVID or coming out of COVID. So I didn't have to use that coin term pivot. I got to build it from the ground up under the current circumstances. But yeah, starting it uh, the first week on, my, on the job, you asked what the priorities were. Uh, I had to get payroll set up so that I got a paycheck. <laughs> <That's important. laughs> um, operationally, insurance, not only health insurance for myself, but in anticipation of future employees, payroll, insurance for the organization. So um, basically everything to start a business. Accounting, yeah. It really yeah. It, it, uh, took me very much out of my comfort zone having had the in-depth marketing and public relations background. How does the germ of the idea start, Wendy? Like, who had the idea to start the DMO? Was it an organization or an individual? Well, it's surprising that Santa Ana, for being the second largest city in Orange County, did not have a destination marketing organization and no tourism promotion prior. It wasn't like this had been a component of the city or a chamber of commerce. It did not exist. And it came to fruition because... We had two organizations at the time, a Downtown Inc. and a Business Council, and they would go to their conferences and see their fellow associations, and they would talk about their destination marketing organizations. And they would come back to Santa Ana and start asking, well, why don't we have one of these? And it took the president of the Chamber of Commerce and a local um, developer who started to engage with the hoteliers to put together um, the Tourism Marketing District and that's how we're funded. You have a really interesting history there in Santa and I'd like to hear a little bit about that. I know there was an indigenous population. I'll probably butcher the name of the people there, the Chumash people, is that right? No, that's, that's correct. Right? Okay. <laughs> and then, of course, the Spanish arrived in the 1700s. And today, you've got a rather large Hispanic population. I hear it's over 80%. So what do you do with your roots? How do you express it, and how does it kind of blend into how you market yourself as a DMO? Well, it is um, the 80% Hispanic population is definitely evident in Santa Ana. Aside from our Hispanic population, we have one of the most historic downtowns. Our city was incorporated in 1869, and we still have a number of of those buildings still standing downtown, which is unique for Orange County. Um, But the Hispanic population, not in obvious ways from the culinary aspects and it's more than just tacos it's the arts and culture it's the festivals i mean 
we have celebration after celebration from a Chicano Heritage Festival taking place later this month in August to a Dio de los Muertos Festival in November to a regular monthly event called Dancing in the Streets. Um, our Hispanic heritage is reflective everywhere. I mean, you walk downtown and Spanish is almost the primary language. I understand one of your campaigns is called the Proud Santanero. What's that about? So we were um, approached, this was a, um, a take of a, a different program that the Santa Ana Business Council had done several years ago. They had focused on about a dozen uh, local business owners and shared their story about coming to uh, Santa Ana and starting their business. And we were asked to, if we wanted to do a video component, and we looked at the project and we decided that we were going to take a twist on it and make it and fit it into our brand. So instead of, we, we took eight of the 12 and there was reasons, one, was a college student that was no longer in Santa Ana, two businesses had relocated, and a fourth person was not interested in participating. But we focused on those eight um, local business owners, and they ranged from a business owner who's had his Western wear store in Santa Ana for 75 years now, um, a woman who owns um, an Alta Baja market that has the largest collection of Mexican wine, um, and an owner of the Frida Cinema, which is the only independent movie cinema in Orange County. And we asked them what made them proud to be a Santanero. And then we also asked them what they recommended to visitors. And we've incorporated those recommendations into our visitor guide via quotes. Um, the videos, we did an overall video, but then we did individual videos, which you can find on our YouTube channel and on our website, TravelSantaAna.com. But the beauty of that was we didn't have any scripting and what they shared was genuine and heartfelt and it resonated about the people and the passion and the pride in Santa Ana and just walking down the street and exploring different um, areas and seeing the murals and seeing the arts and culture were some of the things that they recommended um, to the visitors. And we are starting on our second round where we're, we've identified another seven um, business owners to highlight. It is amazing if you just let people be themselves what you get out of it. Oh, definitely. And that was one of the things, you know, you had asked um, operationally what I had um, started out as and what those early days looked like. You know, I was starting a destination marketing organization, but I was also taking a city that had zero branding and marketing in the tourism realm. So what did that look like? And it was really getting to know the community. And after only being there about, I'd say 10 days, I recognized how prideful and passionate the residents and the business owners and the, and the community leaders were about this city. And it was something rare. I mean, I see that coming from the Midwest, having been born and raised there, but having now lived out in California since 2007, you don't typically see that in Orange County. So having that and seeing that was something truly special. And I recognize that Santa Ana had a lot to offer. It was just taking it and now elevating it and sharing it with visitors. That is so cool. I assume you must know Chuck Davison, the CEO of Visit Slow Cal. Do you know Chuck? I do know Chuck, yes. We've served on the Cal Travel Board together. Ah, we did a podcast together at IPW where Chuck and I tackled some of the really tough issues, including homelessness and its impact on tourism. Do you have that issue in Santa Ana? Oh, I, I think that issue is, is um, impacting a lot of communities throughout California, um, and Orange County is not excluded. Um, because Santa Ana is the governmental hub for Orange County, we have the county jail and the county courthouse. So our community is considered sometimes, and I air quote, dumping grounds because other municipalities will bring the homeless to Santa Ana for court appearances and for government services and leave them. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Wow. And it affects tourism, of course. Oh, of course. I mean, visitors want to feel safe. They want to see a pleasant um, environment. They don't want to see encampments or 
um, public intoxication or drug use or be harassed by homeless. So yeah, it definitely impacts tourism. What's your approach to international marketing? The 80% Hispanic um, population is definitely an opportunity. Um, So we've incorporated, um, we've done a visitor guide in Spanish digitally. Visitors can download that. Um, We have done Hispanic targeted campaign. It's currently going on um, through Expedia. We did a co-op Mexico campaign on Brand USA. Uh, We've done targeted Spanish social media components. We're looking at attending with Visit California a Mexico media event later this fall and having a Hispanic or a Mexico meeting planner fam trip next year to Santa Ana. So I will be on a panel at ESTO, U.S. Travel Association's ESTO, um, talking about our Hispanic efforts and and what we're doing to um, target that audience. I look forward to seeing you there. We can meet in person. That would be great. You said earlier, Wendy, that Santa Ana is the second largest city in Orange County, and yet I understand you have a very small staff, three people. How do you handle it with limited resources? Well, I am truly blessed. We're small but mighty, and my two team members are both passionate, knowledgeable, and driven, and we have to remember... You can shout out their names, by the way. Uh, Ana Laura Basara, who is our director of sales, and Maria Gonzalez, who is content and community engagement manager. Great. Ana Laura and I worked together in our previous DMO, and Maria... um, is a resident of Santa Ana who reached out to me two weeks into my job and wanted to meet with me. And I recognized right away how valuable she was. Not only um, is she passionate, but she also has that history and knows the ins and outs. So she's been invaluable to me as a, a leader to navigate, you know, politics and community dynamics. So she's been <laughs> instrumental in it. that. <laughs> I like the way you put that. Yeah. And so, you know, the only thing, I mean, aside from a budget, we do have, if, if our DMO had existed in 2019 when tourism was at its, you know, height, we'd have about a $1.6 million budget, which isn't bad at all. We're weaning our way into that. We started with a 1.2. We're now up to about a 1.3. I'm anticipating probably closer to 1.4 for next year. So really the only thing holding us back is our own bandwidth. We talked about hiring a fourth person, kind of an admin, but there was really no defining job description for that person as our projects ebb and flow. So we decided that rather than hiring a fourth person, that we would allocate that money towards contracting and outsourcing assistance for projects as they present themselves, but also looking at tools and technology that will make our jobs a little bit easier. You started to use AI yet? You know, we started to do a little bit of AI in kind of sparking creativity Um, I'll tell you, I've used it twice now personally for, hey, AI, give me um, brunch locations in X city that take reservations. And I was given six and only one of them actually was still open and actually took reservations. So I think we're a ways off before trusting that entirely. Um, But we did use it. I I used it to um, write a blog post about... Santa Ana parks just to kind of spark, like I said, spark the the creativity and and idea. But there was a lot of uh, fact checking and and editing on that. I was on a call last week where somebody used AI to take notes. It was so cool. The way that it works is it listens to the conversation. It doesn't just transcribe it the way that you're kind of used to. There's a lot of those kind of voice to text ideas. This one actually summarizes the meeting. So at the end of it, you get the summary of what it is that people said, and at the end, you get the action follow-up steps. Isn't that cool? Oh, that's very cool. I'll have to share yeah. that with our uh, board secretary. The one that I tried was called Fireflies.ai. I know there are a bunch of them. In fact, somebody was telling me that they tried one that actually will attend a meeting for you. Like, you don't even have to show up. <laughs> oh, we're just yeah. all going to get really lazy, aren't we? <laughs> we're going to phone in meetings. Now, we went from having to meet in person to now everything being via Zoom to now we don't even, like, we can send a robot to attend in our place. 
I don't think laziness is a problem for either one of us. I can tell from your <laughs> title, for example, that you're a certified destination management executive. You got that CDME next to your title. I know that wasn't easy to get. I'd like to hear a little bit about that experience. You know, Destinations International is a valuable resource for anyone in, in destination marketing. And I started on that journey back in, oh, I think it was 2011. I got my certification in 2014. And it, it really opens your eyes to being more than just marketing, if that's your, your focus, or if your focus is accounting, it really gives you a broader perspective of what destination marketing organizations really do. And I think you, you get an appreciation for the politics, while no one can prepare you for all of the politics, you get a better understanding. Yeah, and at the time when I, I went through that, my destination marketing organization that I was working for was a division of a chamber of commerce. And yeah, my paper on that was why that's not a good idea. <laughs> where was the uh, where was the destination? Irvine, which is a neighbor of Santa Ana. You don't have a corporate logo. There must be a story behind that. Yeah, well, when we were going through the branding process, as I mentioned, you know, it was within the first two weeks that I recognized that this community had a very unique pride and passion about it. And so as we were going through the branding process, we recognized that a corporate logo was not going to resonate with the community. And so we sought four local artists because Santa Ana is very rich in arts and culture. And those four artists represent four different communities from Vietnamese, Hispanic, Black, and Japanese. And we asked them to create a Santa Ana signature that is reflective of how they feel about the community and view the community. And we use those logo, those signatures interchangeably. So we have all four logos, logos, and I air quote logos. We have all four on the back of our business cards rotating. I noticed that you like to air quote. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. We have those four signatures rotating on our, our business cards as well as on our website. And there's a story behind each one that you can read about on TravelSantaAna.com. That's so cool. I'll have to take a look. When I introduced you a few minutes ago, you mentioned Major League Baseball. We have struggled somewhat to work with MLB because it's difficult to use their marks. What was your experience with that? Major League Baseball does what they want. <laughs> I mean, We're Major League Baseball. Yeah, I think some cities, I mean, this was back in, I think, 2001 when Miller Park had just opened in Milwaukee. Um, we were hosting the, the Major League Baseball All-Star Game there. And they're an anomaly. They're, they're their own bosses. And you can provide them with content to share and, and trying to get your message out about what a great destination you have. And they're there to promote baseball. So if you can interweave, I think some of the destinations that have hosted that event since have done a, a great job at somehow working their way into that and telling the, the destination story. But yeah, it was, um, it was a struggle. I think as an industry, we're all going to have to work on that with all the sporting leagues, not just MLB, it's NFL, it's the rest of them. Um, I'd love to see more cooperation on that level in terms of being able to use the marks to certainly market internationally to tourists. Well, I agree. And especially with the Olympics coming to Los Angeles and we also have um, the World Cup. Uh, there's there's a lot of opportunity to to work with those entities to um, be able to promote more from a destination perspective than just the event perspective. Yeah, I would certainly hope that all these major organizations would understand that this is good for America. You would think, but I I, I think that they're focused on what they need, and they don't maybe have the bandwidth or the the true understanding of how this can impact the efforts. Well, we threw it out there, Wendy, you and me, so hopefully other people will take up the charge and we'll see where we get with it. We'll I think see. we're out of time, so thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Well, thanks again, Mark. I really appreciate the opportunity to tell Travel Santa Ana's story. We're excited to see you grow, and I'm sure I'll see you at Esto. Speaking of which, anyone that's listening, I hope you'll drop by the podcast booth because we will be podcasting live from Esto in Savannah, Georgia next week. Hope to see you there. I'm Mark Lapidus. Thanks for listening. 
If you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, email us at podcast at thebrandusa.com or call 202-793-6256. Our producer is Asher Mirovich, who also writes and performs all music and sound. With extra help from Bernie Lucas, Danze Karaoke, and Casey D'Ambra. Engineering by Brian Watkins. Be sure and let your friends in the travel industry know about this podcast. Thanks for listening to Brand USA Talks Travel.